Hello and welcome to Fish USA. My name is Steve Washer. Today I'm going to be tying some patterns that will be used this, this upcoming fall for the salmon steelhead run here on Lake Erie. The pattern I'm going to be tying first is called the Arrogant Emerald Shiner. It's a relatively very simple pattern. It's extremely effective in the Lake Erie tributaries and also it's a great warm water fly. To start this pattern, I'm going to select a Daiichi 1750 streamer hook with a straight eye and a down eye is fine as well. This is a size 6 pattern. And you can tie this pattern on hook sizes anywhere from size of, to 2 down to about a 10. Our material selection is very, very simple. I have some Spirit River UV2 White Marabou. I've got a little bit of Polar Flash. I have a Cactus Chenille, an Estes, an Ice Dubbing. Any of that material would work very well in this situation. And I also have a Mallard Flank Feather off the breast of a male Mallard Duck. Today I'm going to be using a 210 denier thread. I'm using a red just as it should, because it will show up easier on camera. To start this, I'm going to start with a jam knot right behind the eye of the hook. And I'm going to put down a thread base as I wrap back toward the bend of the hook. Cut off my excess. Now, I've selected a marabou plume. And this is white marabou that I'm using. Now the one thing that's very important here is we don't want to make our tail too long or we don't want to make it too short. If we make it too long, it's going to wrap around the bend of the hook. If we make it too short, it won't have the, the, the desired action. So one quick and simple way to ensure we have the right length is I want my marabou plume to be approximately the length of the shaft of the hook. So what I do is I use a two-hand system. I've measured right here, and I'm, I'm just a little over, but that's okay and I exchange the material into my other hand, right there. This will be my tie-in point. I lay my marabou down on top of the hook shank, but the one thing I want to back up and state is my thread is directly over the point of the barb. Not the tip of the hook, but the point of the barb. That's my tie-in point. So I encompass my hook with thumb and forefinger using a pincer grasp, and I proceed to wrap the plume up the shank. With an open spiral wrap. I make several wraps in place. I'm going to cut off the excess plumage. There we go. Now I'm going to spiral back down the shank of the hook. Relatively tight open spirals. And I'm right back to my starting tie-in point above, excuse me, right above the point of the barb. Okay? For our next material, I'm, and you can use a variety of materials on this. Today I'm using a Palmer chenille, but you can use a Stez Cactus chenille, a Stez Grande, or even an ice dubbing and put in a dubbing loop if you, if you like. But I like the Palmer chenille. I'm going to tie it in on the right side, secure it very well, I'm going to advance my thread up to my tie-off point. I'm going to make a, a real quick, just one half hitch. Now when I wrap this, I want to take my time. I'm going to use the rotary feature of this vise. I want to make one wrap right next to the other. You know what, I think I'm going to do an overhand on this. Overhand wrap, excuse me. And I'm wrapping that material really tightly. And it doesn't even hurt to have a little tiny bit of cement there on the base of your, uh, on your thread base. Using a two-hand exchange, I'm wrapping over with my left hand, securing it at the bottom with my right hand. And I want to make sure at all times that the bulk of the material is pointing in one direction. Now the effectiveness of this pattern comes from the fact that in, in, in the Great Lakes system, there are um, one of the predominant forage bases for these fish is the Emerald Shiner and the Rainbow Smelt. This pattern works extremely well to imitate both of those species. As I noted earlier, it's, it's an extremely effective steelhead pattern, 
but it's also a phenomenal warm water pattern for smallmouth bass that uh, inhabit the Great Lakes. And the one thing you, you want to try and mimic is the exact, the, the approximate size of, of your forage base within the Great Lakes system. So most of our um, emeralds in, in and around Lake Erie are anywhere from an inch and a half to maybe, maybe three inches long. So now I'm going to tie this off. I'm at my tie off point and I make about two wraps behind it and then I'll pull everything back and I'll make two or three wraps with a lot of tension in front of it. I'm going to snip off that material, set it aside. I'm going to clean this up. I've got a few errant fibers around here from the uh, body material. Clean that up nicely. And then I'm just going to throw in a whip or a half hitch just to secure the material. The next thing I'm going to do, I've taken a mallard breast feather, as you can see, and I've stripped off most of the material on the left side of the feather. To prepare this feather for tying, I'm going to take, I'm going to grab it by the tips, and I'm going to pull the material back. I'm going to tie it in by the tip. My tie-in point will be right here. A little bit of the tip material. So I secure it underneath, and the shiny side is facing forward or toward the eye of the hook. Several wraps. Now, I take the tip and I fold it back and make several wraps over top of that to secure it in place and trim off the tip. Our feather is now very secure and we're ready to wrap it. I'm going to secure the feather with a pair of uh, rotating hackle pliers. And as you'll notice, I have a little bit of material sticking out on the left side. I'm going to fold that back with my thumb and forefinger as I make my first wrap. I'm into my second wrap and I keep pulling that material back. You don't, if you don't have any mallard, um, teal works extremely well as well as a substitute. And if you don't have any teal, you might want to uh, use a lightly uh, barred uh, grizzly schlop and hackle. So now we're at the end, we're at our tie off point. Keep a little bit of pressure on that hackle stem, we don't want it to loosen up. I make several wraps behind several wraps in front. I come in and I cut off the stem of that hackle. And now I'm ready to whip finish. The whip finish tool. I'm going to make about four or five wraps. And I always double whip finish just as a little bit of added security. Make four or five more wraps. I've got a nice petite little head. I give my thread a good tug to secure that. I clip off my thread and then I'll hit it with a dollop of, of head cement and we're ready to go fishing. For Fish USA, Spirit River Company, I'm Steve Washer. Have a great fall fishing season. Thank you.